Seeing Dark Angel as a child. When I was younger, I always told my friends that when I was little, I had seen a dark figure in my room, and I had. The dark figure never hurt me. He, the figure, had broad shoulders and was tall, so I assumed that he was a man. He just stood there, at the end of my bed. He didn't have a face. He was more like a thick shadow. He was big, about 6'3", and he slouched. He had wings, but they were folded on his back. For a long time, I thought it had been a dream, but it wasn't. About two years ago, I was talking to my mom about this man that she was friends with and that they were living with for a while. His name was Tom. We lived with him for three months, and he had got sick and died with cancer. Anyways, my mom had been gone one morning, and when she came home, Tom was sitting at the kitchen table crying. She asked him what was wrong, and he told her that I had came into his room and told him there was a man in my room who was completely black with black wings. At the time, I was about four to five years old. He was terrified for me because I was so little to see something like that. My mom took me to church and told her pastor about it. He told her that what I saw was a dark angel, or the angel of death, and that he didn't hurt me because I was a child, an innocent soul. About a month or so after going to see the pastor and telling him what had happened, he died. And then Tom died. I guess that was a sign that death was coming very soon, and it did. I wanted to share my story because I know there are people out there that this happens to or their children experience it. It's real. I will never forget this. I believe in ghosts and spirits, but I am a very strong believer in angels. Whether they are dark angels or guardian angels, they exist. A Frightening Childhood I remember being frightened all the time, scared, like something was always waiting for me in the next room. It all began when I moved into an old villa built in the early 1900s. I was seven years old. My brother, who was only five at the time, and I were so excited. My father renovated the house shortly after we moved in. He extended my room, which we called the sunroom as it was at the far end of the house where the sun shone in all day and put in a new kitchen, bathrooms, and built a large deck in the backyard with a fish pond at the far end. We also welcomed a new dog into our family, a big fluffy German shepherd called Norman. It wasn't long after we moved in that we started to experience strange phenomena. The first collection of these happenings are ones I can't remember, but ones that my mother had informed me about later in life. While my bedroom was being renovated, I shared a room with my brother. One night, Mom awoke to the sound of us having a conversation. Assuming we had stayed past our bedtime, she came into the room and told us to go to sleep. Instead of responding, we continued to talk, and at that moment, she realized that we were sleep talking. There he is, I said. He's coming. My brother began to say, The man is here. My mom thought that this was strange, so she woke us up, saying we had a bad dream. The next instant occurred again to my mother. She awoke to footsteps walking around her bed. When she opened her eyes, she saw a short black shadow with glowing green eyes staring back at her. She hit out at the thing in fear, which resulted in my father waking up confused. He insisted that she must have been dreaming, as he didn't believe in anything paranormal. The bizarre thing was that five minutes after she had seen this glowing-eyed creature, my brother ran into her bedroom, 
saying that he had seen E.T. standing by his bed. I remember my first encounter with a ghost. I would have been about 10 years old. It was after my dad had finished renovating my new bedroom. It was a still night and no moon was in the sky. So my bedroom was pitch black. Like my mother, I awoke the footsteps slowly walking into my room and around my bed. I opened my eyes and to my horror, a blonde haired boy with blue eyes knelt beside my bed. He just stared at me smiling. A white glow surrounded him. It was so bright it hurt my eyes. I remember being so terrified I couldn't move. I felt frozen. My heart was racing. I got the courage to pull the blanket up over my head and lay there in the darkness hoping he had gone away. After a few minutes, he had. Our dog Norman was also subject to seeing something paranormal in the house. He used to sit in front of the old fireplace staring at the mantelpiece as if something was there. Waving my hand in front of his eyes didn't deter him. I always wondered if he could see something we couldn't. My mother saw many other entities, including a tall man wearing a top hat, a girl with abnormally big eyes and long brown hair, and small children playing on her window seat. The most terrifying experience I had was something I could not see but only could hear. I had just hopped into bed and turned off the light when I noticed a noise. A noise that sounded like somebody breathing heavily. I listened, I listened for a while. It got louder and louder. It was the scariest thing I'd ever heard in my life. I was actually convinced someone had to be in the room under my bed or in the closet. Too frightened to move, I called out to my parents. My dad came into the room and asked me what was wrong. After informing him of the breathing, he sat with me in silence to see what he could hear and what I'd been telling him about. We sat quietly for a couple of minutes and nothing could be heard. It had completely stopped. He said it could have been the water pipes told me not to worry, and tucked me into bed. I felt comforted, especially now that the breathing had gone, but seconds after he left the room, it started again. It was a deep breathing, almost like whoever it was was struggling to breathe. I can't describe how terrifying it was to hear such a thing. Even when I invited friends over to the house, they were too scared to come back after their visit. On one occasion, I had three friends over. We were playing in the garden at dusk, and I ran inside to grab everyone a drink. When I came back, the three smiling faces had now turned ones to fear. They told me that while I was gone, they heard someone say, Hello. When I asked them to describe the voice, they could only tell me that it sounded like a very small child coming from behind the plants and shrubs next to the pond. I also witnessed some poltergeist activity in the old villa. One evening, while I was sitting by the fire with my mom, we heard a noise coming from the kitchen. We both glanced in the direction of where the sound had come from, and to our surprise, a plastic water jug was hovering above the bench in mid-air for a good three seconds. Suddenly, it fell to the floor, making us jump. Nothing was said. We both just looked at each other with concerned faces. It was like... We were so used to things like that happening. The final happening that I can recall before we moved out was something beyond bizarre. I would have been about 16 at the time. My brother and I decided to go outside with our sleeping bags and look at the stars for a while. It was a good clear night for it. We noticed that the moon looked strange that night. It had a glow about it that we'd never seen before. After a few minutes of staring at it, 
the glow got stronger, and the top of it began to ripple and flicker like a ball of fire. In complete amazement, we sat there watching what we had thought was the moon, then zoomed off and disappeared into the night sky so fast it was hard to comprehend what had just happened. To this day, we still don't know what it was. We were so sure it was the moon. Over the space of 11 years in the house, my family and I experienced some terrifying things. In the end, we had to move out because my parents decided to split. A week after they announced this, my dog died of cancer and Cat was found dead in the garden. It was like the end of an era. So we sold the house to a nice couple with two small children and a small baby. I still drive past the house regularly and wonder if they experience paranormal activity. I guess I'll never know. Weird Childhood Experience This happened to me when I was about 8 years old. When I was little, I had a blanket that I had since I was a baby that I always slept with. I would spread it atop of my other blankets. One night, I'd gone to bed as usual and fallen asleep. I woke up in the middle of the night. I don't know why. Usually I sleep like a log. The foot of my bed faced my closed bedroom door. As I looked at the back of the door, two spots of light appeared on it, about five feet up from the floor. They seemed to be swirling in a circle. A sort of greenish-gray light with sparkly bits in it. Sort of like an old-fashioned TV when the cable was out, like the snow you get when that happened. As I watched, these two balls of light popped off the door and became these... These small creatures, about two feet high, they glowed greenish sort of barrel-shaped bodies, no necks and short arms and legs. I don't think their mouths moved, but they seemed to be communicating to each other. I could hear some squeaky little sounds coming from them. One of them walked to the end of my bed. I sat there frozen. I was so scared I couldn't move. The creature started to tug on the bedspread, pulling itself up onto the end of the bed. I was clutching one end of my baby blanket. This thing started tugging on the other end. We had a short tug of war, and I felt my arms go rubbery, and I let my grip go on the blanket. The creature took it, climbed back down the floor, then the two of them popped back up on the door, becoming the circles once again, the swirling lights coming on once again, this time with my blanket spread out in a square against the wall behind them. They swirled around for a few seconds, and then everything seemed to stuck through the door. Just... disappeared. I could suddenly move again, and dove under my covers, heart pounding and shaking like a leaf. I stayed like that for a long time, and eventually must have fallen asleep. The next morning, I had forgotten all about it. Had breakfast, went out to get dressed, Mom told me to make my bed. That's when I remembered the blanket, and the weird thing that by this time, I had figured was an intense dream. I looked for the baby blanket, but I couldn't find it. I tore the bed apart, looked between all the other sheets, looked under the bed, my closet, the laundry basket. I asked my mom if she took it to wash. She said no. I asked my brothers if they took it. They both said no. I started looking around the house. Couldn't find it anywhere. I went down to the basement and there it was, hanging in the middle of the room from the ceiling, from the floor jotes of the living room above. It wasn't attached with anything, just one edge of it stuck to the side of one of the beams and hanging down like a flag, like, like they wanted me to find it. I told my dad, who didn't believe me, never told anyone else until just a couple years ago. I'm nearing 50, 
and still remember it vividly. I swear, this actually happened.